an alien on the run from the government, and a woman who is reluctantly helping him, are about to find love in an unusual place. In 1977, the probe Voyager 2 was sent out into space. Placed within the probe were images of planet Earth, greetings from the people of Earth in various different languages, and a collection of musical pieces stored on a vinyl record. All of these things were sent as a kind of invitation to any intelligent beings who may encounter Voyager 2 to come and visit Earth. After many years wandering in space, Voyager 2 finally reaches a planet with life, and sometime later, a spaceship from the planet ventures out toward Earth in answer to the invitation. On Earth in Wisconsin, a woman named Jenny Hayden is watching movies of herself and her late husband Scott and drinking alcohol. She starts crying and decides it's best for her to go to bed. The spaceship from the alien planet arrives on Earth and enters the atmosphere over the USA. Military radars pick up its presence, and fighter jets are sent up to deal with whatever the foreign object is. The director of the Department of Defense is informed. Since the spaceship is in U.S. airspace unauthorized, fighter jets are told to fire missiles at it. The missiles do not destroy the spaceship or slow it down. However, the spaceship changes its trajectory. It lands in Wisconsin. The director confirms that the flying object is not from any air base in any country of the world, and then... He calls Mark Sherman from SETI, search for extraterrestrial intelligence. The spaceship crashes across the lake in front of Jenny's house, and a being made of pure light comes out of it. The alien floats across the lake to Jenny's house and enters. After looking around the house for a bit, it finds Jenny's photo album, which contains pictures of Scott. The alien also finds a strand of Scott's hair in the album and unlocks his DNA using it. Jenny wakes up and arrives in the living room. She finds a baby lying there, and in front of her eyes, the baby grows into a complete adult man within minutes. The man spills some metallic orbs on the floor. Horrified, Jenny grabs a gun and points it at the man, but when the man turns around, she sees that it's Scott. She can't believe her eyes. The alien has recreated Scott's body using his DNA. The alien repeats all the greetings in different languages that he heard on the record that was sent with Voyager 2, hoping to find the language that Jenny speaks, but Jenny simply passes out from shock. The alien looks at himself in the mirror and then proceeds to play the films on the projector. He observes Scott in the films and copies all of his behaviors. He also learns how to fire a weapon by watching Scott do it. He sees Jenny speaking to a raccoon, saying she means it no harm. Then he hears helicopters flying overhead and collects his metallic orbs. He grabs one orb and it begins glowing. He uses it to send a message to his home planet. He tells them the environment on Earth is hostile and his ship has been destroyed. He asks them to pick him up from the original landing point in three days. Jenny awakens and thinks that all that she saw was a dream. But then she looks outside and sees the alien. She quickly grabs some pants and boots and rushes toward her car, but the alien is already in the garage. With a very limited vocabulary, he tells Jenny that they have to go from here as more government helicopters arrive. Jenny and the alien get in the car, and Jenny pretends that the car isn't starting because she doesn't want to go with him. However, he starts the vehicle with a touch of his finger, and they head out. On the way, Jenny asks the alien where he wants to go and he uses another one of his metallic orbs to form a map of the United States. He points toward Arizona, and Jenny starts driving in that direction. Mark arrives at the site of the spaceship crash with the military and asks them to keep an ear on the local police reports, checking for anything weird that comes in. A couple of workers drill into the crashed object, assuming that it's a meteor, but are shocked when it turns out to be hollow inside. While Jenny drives, the alien pays close attention to everything around him and everything that Jenny does. He notices that at a yellow light, Jenny speeds the car up. News on the radio reports that the biggest meteor in history crashed into Wisconsin last night, and Jenny puts two and two together, realizing that she is traveling with an alien. She asks him why he looks like Scott, and he responds by singing a song, thinking that maybe it's the appropriate response. Jenny almost crashes her car into an oncoming van to get the van driver's attention. She gets out and screams that she is being kidnapped. The van driver rushes to help her wielding a lug wrench, but the alien takes out another one of his metallic orbs and uses it to heat the wrench until it melts. 
The van driver runs away. Sherman informs the director that the object they've discovered is a hollow vessel, and they are taking it to a lab to examine it. Jenny notices her gun in the alien's lap and asks him to put it away because it makes her a little bit jumpy. The alien asks what little bit jumpy means, and she replies that it means nervous or afraid. She asks him how much English he understands, and he replies, a little bit. The alien goes through Jenny's wallet and finds out her name. He tells her that he looks like Scott so that she won't get a little bit jumpy. She understands. At the lab, military personnel inform Sherman that the police got a call about a kidnapping on the highway today, and the kidnapper melted a man's lug wrench, which is weird, as Sherman specified. Next, scientists manage to open the spaceship, and Sherman goes inside it. He finds a record, and recognizes it as the one that was placed on Voyager 2, because he was part of the team that placed it. He realizes that their invitation has been answered. Jenny and the alien stop to get some petrol, and Jenny goes to use the bathroom. In the bathroom, she leaves a note on the mirror that she is being kidnapped and needs help. The alien, who has no notion of gendered bathrooms, enters the ladies' room and finds the note. He asks Jenny what kidnapped means, and a frustrated Jenny explains that it is what he is doing to her. She says she doesn't know where he is taking her, and what awaits her when they'll reach, and she is tired of the uncertainty. So if he is going to shoot her, he should just do it now. The alien points the gun straight at her head, but then he takes out the magazine. He tells her that he means her no harm, just like she said to the raccoon in the video. Jenny is comforted. Next, Jenny sleeps while the alien drives. He's carefully seen her do it, and he claims he now knows how it's done. The alien sings one of the songs he hears on the radio, and Jenny wakes up. She asks him if they sing a lot on his planet, and he replies yes. She asks him if they get hungry, and he asks her what hungry means. She explains that it's when your stomach is empty. The alien says that this human body does have a terrible emptiness, and asks if that is hunger. Jenny confirms it is, and they agree to stop for food. Next, they approach a traffic light. And as it turns yellow, the alien speeds up, almost crashing into a truck. Jenny is outraged and says he assured her that he knew the rules. The alien replies that he watched her very carefully. He noticed that red means stop, green means go, and yellow means go very fast. Jenny realizes her mistake. Back at the lab, Sherman explains to the director that an alien has landed on Earth and assumed the appearance of Scott Hayden because he was spotted on the highway in the kidnapping incident, and the records say that he's been dead for a while now. The director asks how this is possible, and Sherman explains that the alien probably used cloning technology because the authorities found Scott's hair at Jenny's house, and that would give the alien all the DNA he needs. The director asks if this is actually possible, and Sherman replies that humans can't do it with their current technology, but they are obviously dealing with a civilization that is far more advanced. Jenny asks the alien when he needs to be in Arizona, and he replies in three days. She asks what will happen if he doesn't make it, and he replies that his people will leave without him, and he cannot keep this human form indefinitely, so he will die. Next, they arrive at a restaurant by the side of the road, and the alien notices a dead deer tied to the front of a car. He asks Jenny about it, and she explains that sometimes people hunt animals to eat them. The alien asks if deer eat people too, and Jenny replies no. The hunter arrives and asks the alien to keep his hands off the deer. Inside the restaurant, Jenny explains to the alien how to get to where he wants to go and also shows him how to use a credit card, just in case something happens to her. The alien is still looking at the dead deer. Then, the alien notices a picture of Jenny and Scott, and Jenny explains that it's from their honeymoon. He asks what honeymoon means, and she explains that it's when people who love each other get married and first go away together. The alien asks what love means. Jenny explains love is when people care for someone more than they care for themselves. She almost breaks into tears while explaining it. Next, Jenny tries to secretly escape out of the back of the restaurant and take a bus back home. This is why she was explaining to the alien how to get to Arizona on his own. However, the cook informs her that her friend is in the parking lot. Jenny goes to check and sees that the alien is standing in front of the dead deer. 
He uses one of his metallic orbs to bring the deer back to life and sets her free. Jenny is moved by this act. However, the hunter arrives and thinks that the alien has stolen the deer. He punches the alien, and the alien punches him back. The hunter's friends arrive and start beating the alien up. Jenny grabs her gun from the car and fires it in the air to scare the hunters away. She decides to not abandon the alien, and the two get in the car and head out. The hunters try to follow them, but they escape, and the hunters crash into a bus. Next, as Jenny and the alien are driving, a police car quietly starts following them, because Sherman put the word out to look for an orange and black Mustang with Wisconsin number plates. They decide to stop at a hotel for a night, while the police officers are told to just surveil the situation until the feds get there. At night, the alien watches a movie on TV which shows a couple kissing passionately. He tries to do the same thing with a sleeping Jenny, but just then, there is a knock on the door, and a man tells the alien that some cops are trying to get into his Mustang. Jenny and the alien enlist the help of the hotel man. He creates a distraction for the cops while they escape. The cops chase Jenny and the alien and drive up right next to them. The alien picks up the gun, and Jenny stops him from shooting the cops. However, the cops take out their gun and shoot at the Mustang. The bullet hits Jenny, killing her. The alien drives at full speed toward an oil tanker, but right before they hit it, he takes out his metallic orb and activates it. A great explosion happens, but the alien comes out of it carrying Jenny completely unharmed because there is a shield around both of them. Sherman arrives on the scene, and he is informed that people saw the alien coming out of the fire with Jenny completely unharmed. He relays the information to the director and tells him that they're setting up a roadblock on a highway where they assume that the alien will be going next. Meanwhile, the alien has taken Jenny and hidden inside a home that is being moved on a truck. He takes stock and finds that he only has two of his power orbs remaining. He uses one of them to heal Jenny and bring her back to life. Next, Jenny wakes up and finds that the alien is gone. It is revealed that he has hitched a ride with a stranger. Jenny arrives at a restaurant, where the waitress tells her that the man she is looking for hitched a ride with the cook of the restaurant and went west. Jenny hitches a ride as well and goes after him. The alien and the cook arrive at the military roadblock, and so does Jenny. She sees him standing there and realizes that he's in trouble. She asks the man who drove her to create a distraction, and while he does, Jenny and the alien escape. Jenny and the alien hitch a ride in the back of a truck, and on the way, Jenny appears upset. The alien asks if he's done something wrong, and she says that he left her without any explanation. The alien says he realized that being with him put her life in danger, and he didn't want to put her through that anymore. Jenny says that he could have at least said goodbye, but the alien says he doesn't know what goodbye means, so Jenny teaches him. The woman next to them in the truck has a baby, and the alien asks Jenny if she's had one as well. Jenny explains that she and Scott wanted a baby, but she has a condition which renders her unable to conceive. Next, Jenny and the alien leave the truck and climb into an empty compartment in a train heading to Arizona. They enter the train wet from the rain, and Jenny advises the alien to take off his wet clothes or he'll get pneumonia. As she helps him undress, a romantic moment ensues between the two, and they end up making love to each other. Sherman arrives at a military base in Arizona and is informed that the military calculated the initial trajectory of the spaceship when it first entered Earth and found that it was headed this way. So now, they believe the alien is returning to Arizona. Sherman notices that there is an autopsy room set up at the base, with restraints on an operating table, and he gets angry at how the military intends to treat the alien. Back on the train, the alien tells Jenny that he likes watching her sleep, and he doesn't understand why. He thinks he's becoming more and more human. Then, he tells her that he has given her a baby tonight, Jenny says that that is not possible, but the alien says he knows this for a fact, and he even knows that it's a boy baby. He says that because he did it with Scott's body, the baby will be human, Scott's baby. However, he adds that it will also be part his, part alien. The baby will know everything he knows, and one day he will be a great teacher. Jenny is shocked. The alien says that if she doesn't want the baby, he can terminate the pregnancy right now, 
but Jenny is happy to keep the baby. She asks the alien to point out the star in the sky which his planet revolves around, so one day she can tell her son where his father came from. The alien is happy to do so. Next, the train stops, but as they get off, they realize that they've gone past Arizona and arrived in Los Angeles. Jenny says it's okay, because they just have to rent a car and drive back. However, she checks her pockets and realizes that her wallet is gone. All they have is a few coins. The alien looks around and gets an idea. He uses the coin to play the slot machines, which he manipulates to hit a jackpot. They use the money to buy a car and head out. The director arrives at the military base, and Sherman expresses his anger at how the military intends to treat the alien when he clearly came to Earth because of human invitation. The director pays him no mind and simply tells him to fall in line or leave. Jenny asks the alien what his planet is like, and he says on his planet there is only one law, one people, and there is no war, poverty, or oppression. However, he adds that his people have lost something. He says the people on Earth are all so different and alive. He says he will miss Earth and its food, songs, and love. Jenny and the alien stop to get some food just a few minutes out from their destination, and several police cars stop outside their restaurant and take them into custody. Sherman arrives on the scene before anybody else and speaks to the alien. He asks the alien if he can do something for him, and Jenny asks him to let the alien go. Sherman says it's not in his power to do that. He asks the alien why they're headed for the nearby crater. Is the crater from a time that his people came here before? The alien confirms that his people have been observing humans for a while because they are an interesting species. He says that what he finds most beautiful about humans is that they are at their best when circumstances are the worst. Inspired by this comment, Sherman decides to risk his life and career and orders the police to let Jenny and the alien go. After they leave, the director arrives and gets furious when he finds out what Sherman has done. However, Sherman is content with having done the right thing. Jenny and the alien arrive at the crater, but they are followed by several military helicopters. As Jenny and the alien enter the crater, the helicopters fire warning shots in their direction. However, before they can do any actual harm, the alien's ship arrives. The ship is a smaller version of his planet. The alien kisses Jenny and tells her he loves her. Before leaving, he gives his last metallic orb to her and says that his son will know what to do with it. He says goodbye, and Jenny watches as he is beamed up. The End Thank you for watching. Be sure to like our channel and subscribe if you enjoy content like this. Also, let us know what movie you would love us to recap for you.